Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Rafael from Notebooks Project, and I help Java developers use better programming practices. It's okay, so um, they can work in a stress-free project with fewer bugs. So um, today we're gonna see a challenge about generics, and uh, let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. I'm going to go to the presentation mode so you can see the challenge better. So I'm going to give you a brief. So we have a static class, a static inner class that receives a generic type. And uh, we are printing these values. Um, so I'm going to ask you, what is the output? Uh, I'm going to give you some time. OK, so let's see the answer. Um, oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK, so let's see why. Let's see why. OK, um, OK, you're not accessing the bottom meter. OK, you're very, very, I, I was thinking that it's too easy to be true. Okay. Yeah, this one, this one was very tricky. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right, Rodrigo. So I'll just uh, explain here a bit more detailed. So yeah, we are invoking the method attack, um, passing the arrow, and then we are invoking it passing a double value and then a float value. Um, so we are declaring a generic type in the class. So it's a class level generic type. So by declaring a, a T here um, gives us the flexibility of passing any type we want here. So in the moment we pass this type here, I mean, string to this parameter, T becomes um, string. string. Yeah. And then when we pass a double, a T uh, turns to a double and the float, the same thing. So um, yeah, we, we can um, build components. We can build uh, many generic things by using this concept of generics. We could even put more uh, generic types here. Uh, we could put a, uh, an R, we can we could put uh, uh, a Z or whatever, and then we could use those types here. We could um, just declare them here and use in a method, um, and then pass two generic types. Then we could manipulate them. So we could even. Um, have a generic type in the method. So if if we don't want to uh, manipulate the generic type in the class, if we want something more private, we can just declare the type in in the method. So we can use by parameter here. So this is useful when we want to. Uh, use um, when we want to build our components. And we can see that in the Java, um, in the new, in, in the Java, in Java 8, they use a lot of this um, concept of generics. So you can see here, supplier interface. It's basically a functional interface that receives a type, and then you get this type back. So it's it's very useful to know the generic a concept so it enables us to create amazing things so yeah but uh yeah i just wanted to give you a brief about generics and i also would like to emphasize here that the trick of this challenge is that we are uh, accessing the um, the instance variable and okay, we are the local variable here. And we are passing here the the value to the to this method to to this uh, parameter to this local variable. 
So but we are it's not be, being used. Yeah, it's it it wasn't never it it was never used. So that's why when we invoke this uh, generic type, it's just new because. Uh, and what about and, the the answer with all the this? Okay, we can see. That was my. Even if you trick us with the these, I was tricked by the, the okay, it's not a handle uh, string, okay. That's why you said that so easily that would be an error and 1.0 and dot zero because it's the the most uh, uh, common answer to the, the challenge. <laughs> yes. Uh, but that's a good point, uh, okay. uh, uh, what you talk about uh, is when, when they call, they call true string, because when you call uh, the double, in fact, is a we reach a little more our understanding of the string. And uh, the 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 wrappers they use it to to overwrite to string. So when you call even double is an object and. The, the the class that that extend the numbers overwrites it to a string to return the the values and yeah. so maybe Raphael can talk a little about that but you can't call to a string because the as the double the fold the, the numbers uh, override to a string so they will return the values instead the, of uh, a, a random a, a, the random class identifier. Yes, exactly. That was the, the my main uh, doubt and it's already so so yeah to 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 learning yeah to we learning can topics. Yeah it's because double Rodrigo they override the two string method. So we can we can check here. Uh where is it Oh, here, you can see that they are printing the number. Okay. Floating decimal to Java format string, okay. Yeah. That's cool. It is, yeah. So every wrapper type, uh, all of those Java classes, they uh, they override the two string method, uh, as well, equals method, all of those methods. Equals, hash code. Um, yeah, so that we can use them more effectively. Yeah. Any other questions? So, I want to give a, a, a small question. If you, have no, in the, if you have time, no problem. Go on. Uh, uh, I was as answered that that would occur an exception, but in fact, uh, uh, that is a set that occurs when do we call this on the static context. But in that case, uh, there is no static context uh, no. uh, from the point of view to the class is calling because they have an instance of the class. Uh, Rapper can talk about that a little bit. Yes. So let's see the code again. Um, yes, you're right. This is not a static variable. Uh, it's only the class that's static. So have you ever seen static class because they're not very common. So um, I can explain about that as well if you want. Yes, yes, but, but my, my my doubt is is that is was a static method, but it's not a static method, it's a static class. So the, the, the section, the section I was thinking about it will, would not, not occur. Uh, yeah, so here it's a static class, uh, and the, the method is just normal. It's an instance method. And the variable as well is just uh, an instance variable. Yes, okay. it, it, it is interesting because there are lots of concepts 
So our, our brain do not process all the concepts at the same time. That, yeah, that's yeah. a good point too. When, when I evaluate in some situation, there is lots of concepts. And yeah, I created this static class because I wanted to co to uh, to put the generic type in the in a class level. And when we use a static class, um, we can we can instantiate the class directly. And if we don't use static class, what we need to do is to instantiate the enclosing class and then instantiate the other one. Then we have to put the other new here. So I don't like to do that because it makes the challenge really complex. So that's why I use a static class. I mostly used on my challenge uh, static class because I don't need to instantiate the enclosing class. I just need to instantiate the static class. Yes, it, it's a cleaner way to, to use class. Exactly. Not only not only a cleaner way to, to write code, but also a more efficient way because you don't have like a complex um, object with all new values because you are not using it. You're just instantiating the, the, the object to instantiate the inner class. So uh, I, I like the way to use the static class, uh, uh, inner static class to avoid this, this kind of uh, approach of instantiating a, a, a complex object just to get another one. So I think it, there, there is two uh, good points. The, the, the readability and also the, the performance. Exactly. Yes, Do you I have did. any other questions? No, no, no. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, stop sharing. Okay, guys, so um, thanks for participating and for watching this challenge. And uh, you learned how to use generic and uh, how to um, use them to build your own components. And uh, if you want to know more, you go to nobuxproject.com. And there is a section there um, named as um, Java Dev Gym. And then you can solve your challenge weekly. So I'm launching challenge every week. So um, give a like to the video and uh, Stay tuned for more.